Last week I made a video outlining some of the upgrades that I've made to my cheap carbon hardtail. Some of you may have noticed that the rubber mastic frame protection that I used looks extremely ugly and out of place. And after riding my white trail bike at the weekend, I noticed the sleek form-fitting chainstay protection that came stock with the bike. So this got me thinking, what if I could 3D print a custom frame protection piece that would not only look better, but also provide an extra level of lightweight protection to my carbon frame? In this video, I'm going to outline how I made this custom bash guard piece on an area of the frame with complex geometry, in the hopes that you may use these ideas to go out and create your own custom frame pieces. And if you're thinking, I don't own a 3D printer, there are many inexpensive services online that will allow you to print your designs through them. So this process may seem pretty involved, but creating a truly tailored and custom piece for your bike is extremely rewarding, not to mention teaching you a brand new set of skills. And with that, Let's get on with today's video. So first of all, you're going to want to get your hands on one of these, an Xbox Connect. You can pick these up relatively inexpensively at second hand shops. I got this one here for £6, but make sure it comes with a USB adapter and power supply. We're going to use this along with a free software called Sconnect to produce a 3D scan of the frame geometry. Now don't worry, there's many tutorials on YouTube about how to use this software if you need a more in-depth explanation from this video. So to prep the bike for scanning, you'll need to remove any existing frame protection that's on there and any components that might obstruct the scan. In my case, this meant removing the rear wheel. Then, using Sconnect, you can slowly build up a 3D model of the area of interest. This may take a few goes, but once you get the hang of it, you can produce some relatively detailed models of the bike. You don't have to get everything and you don't have to get everything perfect, so long as you've got a good amount of data for the surface that you're wanting to protect. As you can see here, this part of the frame has curvature in all three axes, so it'd be very difficult to design the frame protection using traditional metrology techniques. For the next step, you'll need to use the editing tools in the software to crop as much of the unwanted parts of the frame as possible. This is due to the polygon limitations of the free versions of this software. Then, you can use the tools to smooth and fill the distortions or holes in the scan. The model can then be exported to an STL file, which can be opened in one of the many free CAD softwares available. For this section of the video, I'm going to use a free online CAD package called Tinkercad. So at this point, we need to produce an inverse of the scan that we've just created. There are a couple of different ways that we can do this. Here I just created a simple box and subtracted my 3D scan from that box. Now that you've got an inverse of the frame geometry, it's time to get creative and shape this box down into something that resembles a frame protective piece. I probably went a bit over the top here using a professional engineering software called NX11. To be honest, this was completely unnecessary and massively overcomplicated the process. Another method of doing this is to import your scan, increase the size of the scan, and then subtract the original model to create a shell. And while this will be much quicker, you'll still require some tinkering to make it look good. Now that we have our nearly finished frame protection model, we need to check that the piece is dimensionally representative of what we want to create. This is because while the Xbox Connect is very good at determining form, it's not very good at determining scale. To do this step, you can get a set of calipers or a rule and measure the true distance of a number of different points in the area of interest. You can then use this data to adjust the CAD model to ensure it will fit. Retrospectively, you could also do this step with the original scan before any modelling takes place. At this point, it's also important to think about how you're actually going to adhere this to the frame. If, like me, you're going to be using double-sided adhesive tape, you need to ensure that you account for the extra thickness of the tape on the frame. Once you're happy with the dimensions, you can then use your slicing software to prepare the model for your 3D printer. As mine had some relatively complex geometry, it did require some supports and ended up taking an hour and 30 to print. After the model had printed, I removed the supports and sanded down all the sharp edges. I then used this foam double-sided adhesive tape that's typically used for mounting number plates to secure the piece to the frame. The advantage of using foam tape is it will help to distribute the load from any stressed raised points of the model in case of an impact. It will also provide a minor level of dampening for the smaller impacts. However, the great thing about 3D printing is if the protection gets damaged or destroyed, I can simply print out a brand new one. While the piece I created was not anywhere near 100% accurate, I was very pleased with how this cheap method performed. 
Of course, for this piece I could have just used a traditional chainstay guard, but now that I know it's possible to produce custom parts for my bike, I've got the freedom to produce other pieces from further frame protection to custom GoPro mounts. The possibilities really are endless. This video could be hours long if I went into the detail about things such as printing materials, layer height, layer orientation, so if you do have any questions about this process, I'll be more than happy to help you out in the comments below. In addition, if you have any feedback regarding this process or video please let me know also in the comments below. If you found this video informative please leave a like and consider subscribing for more content such as this. Anyway thank you for watching this video and ride safe.